So these were found in the same week, uh, 60 metres apart, on a site which is one of our long-running excavations, a quarry in Staffordshire, near the confluence of the rivers Trent and Tame. They don't come along every day, or indeed every week, um, and they're remarkable finds just to get one, but to get two in the same week is really quite something special. They're Neolithic polished axe heads. This axe here, it's got a lovely and a greenish tinge to it. It's made of quite a coarse stone, but it's been polished by hand um, to quite a, a, a smooth finish. But you can nonetheless still see all of the little pits and divots in it caused by the, the coarse nature of the raw material. It's a type of greenstone um, and it's quite distinctive. Geologically it's, it's a gabbro and most of the axes in this material found in the British Isles uh, come from the Lizard Peninsula right at the south southwesternmost tip of the British Isles um, in Cornwall. And so it's travelled uh, well over 300 miles to get from there up to uh, Staffordshire. And polishing these by hand took a fair bit of effort. They're likely to have been roughly flaked, first of all, to get the approximate shape and then probably ground against a stone. We find stones both in the ground and uh, portable, uh, which have deep grooves um, running down them. They're known as polissoirs. And that's probably how they, they um, achieve the initial grinding. And then the final finishing would have been done probably with sand and water and then with some of these we suspect they might have you know, got a, a really high gloss on them by by polishing or greasing with animal fats as well these types of axes are typical of the neolithic we start to find them at about 4000 bc and they're made pretty much all the way up to the end of the Neolithic, about 2400 BC. The second one is very different, a much smoother raw material and a much softer raw material as well. I'm going to need to do some homework on this to figure out exactly where it's come from. It's very quartz rich little flakes of sparkling mica in there as well. This is probably from a much more local source. But we'll need to get it under the microscope and have a look. Now, the two axes were found 60 metres apart. This one was found in the base of a burnt mound. Burnt mounds are enigmatic features consisting of a small gully, usually leading from a watercourse, like a stream, to a trough, which is designed to hold water. And then to the side of the trough, you have piles and piles of burnt stones. There are all sorts of different theories about their function. Some people think they were used for cooking meat, although we very rarely find any animal bones or domestic debris associated with them. Some people think they might have been used for brewing. Um, another theory, which I quite like because it seems to fit with the archaeological evidence that we've got from them in the Midlands, at least, um, is that they were uh, sweat lodges or um, kind of saunas, prehistoric saunas. They're usually associated with the second millennium BC. So that's the later part of the early Bronze Age into the Middle Bronze Age and onwards. 
But interestingly, over the last few years, we've started to get some radiocarbon dates from some of these burnt mound sites in the West Midlands that suggest that they start much earlier than that. Uh, one recent site we excavated in South Worcestershire dated to around about 2400 BC. And that's right on the period of transition between the late Neolithic, when axes like this were common, and the early Bronze Age. It's very rare to find artefacts on burnt mound sites. Um, they, they tend to be sort of fairly uh, sterile. So the fact that we've got a polished axe in the bottom of it suggests that there's something quite special going on here. But what's really intriguing is that this second axe found around 60 metres to the west came not from a late Neolithic or early Bronze Age feature but from a Roman enclosure ditch. Now we know that stone tools like this, and in particular polished stone axes, uh, were seen as a kind of supernatural um, in the Roman period. Pliny um, talks about how these uh, were, uh, were effectively the stone, the fossilized stone residue of lightning bolts. Um, and says they were much uh, prized uh, by magicians. And indeed, they're prized right the way through the Roman period and beyond, and we've got um, some lovely examples of uh, them being used in folk medicine in Northern Europe, um, and indeed in, in Central Europe, in the Mediterranean, in South Asia, in East Asia, Africa, Brazil, everywhere stone tools were made, um, and especially these kind of highly polished stone axes, they seem to have been interpreted as magical objects by the people who found them. Now the beliefs associated with them vary. Um, Pliny wasn't specific about what they could do magically, um, but there are some lovely examples I found from the Netherlands um, where folklorists collecting um, stories and beliefs in the 17th, 18th and 19th centuries describe them being used to treat all sorts of diseases um, and to ensure the health and fertility of livestock um, and even to protect the finder um, against misfortune sometimes just holding the item or possessing the item might have been enough. Um, sometimes little flakes or bits of powder were taken from it and mixed into a potion. Uh, sometimes they'd be rubbed on an afflicted wound or um, the site of an illness in order to cure the sufferer. So it's really intriguing to speculate what might be going on. Um, at some point, clearly, at least two and a half thousand years after it was made, a Roman farmer must have ploughed up this axe. And who knows precisely what they thought when they found it, but they, they may well, if Pliny was right, have considered themselves to be very lucky indeed. Um, and then it was redeposited in the corner of an enclosure which is quite likely to have um, contained their livestock. So they may have been putting it there as protection, um, as, a, as a kind of means of ensuring that nothing bad happened to their livestock and that their livestock would be healthy and prosper. But it's quite remarkable to think that uh, after two and a half thousand years um, lying on this burnt mound site, it was dug up by a Roman farmer and then reburied and lost for almost another 2,000 years um, before being re-excavated by us. Mm -hmm.